It's a normal day in Seoul. Everyone was going about their business as usual. The city is bustling. People are walking from side to side. Everyone has their own worries and things they have to do. Somebody's having a carefree rest in a cafe. There's no sign of trouble. It seems like it's always been that way. But suddenly the matter starts to crack. These ominous dark places appear in different corners of the city. The residents are very frightened. They don't understand what it is. Some are curious, some are afraid, and some are panicked. People are trying to call the emergency services to help solve the problem. Women are screaming in terror. These cracks widen and soon hideous monsters emerge. The sight of them doesn't bode well. They clearly did not come here in peace. People scatter to escape the hideous monsters and no one wants to fall prey to them. They came here to hunt people. They run and push each other in panic. Someone falls on the pavement. She fell because she's exhausted. She could be the next victim. This woman didn't have time to run away from him. He looks straight into her eyes full of terror and feeds off her fear energy. He raises his axe. She can't expect anything good. Their end is near. Her whole life flies before her eyes. But salvation is near. Someone is coming this way, leaving huge dents in the perfectly smooth asphalt. And this someone is moving with great speed. This man, he saved her. He destroyed that disgusting creature in one move and wasn't even afraid of its sight. Who is this brave man? The girl couldn't believe her eyes. She was already preparing for the worst, but at the last moment, she was saved. She is so grateful to this man for his help. The battle between the giants and the hunters continues. These men are not ready to back down. They fight to the last, and soon these dangerous creatures will be eliminated. It seems that this nasty creature has been defeated. It will never bother the people of the city again, but its other nasty accomplices can still get in. One of the hunters holds in his hand this beautiful yellow glowing stone, which has a special energy. Now these men will stand guard and protect their city from attack. They will not allow monsters to disturb the peace of the citizens. They can sleep in peace. After a while, the hunter movement became popular. They even opened a few offices in Seoul. Yuji Ho came to one of these offices. This young man sincerely wished to work with them. However, his experience and characteristics did not match those that a real hunter should have. The girl tries to help him after all. She asks what skills he has. Maybe he could work in an office but he has absolutely no experience in the special skills that could help him. He doesn't have enough. He's a little embarrassed to admit it. But the girl sees his sincere desire to work for the good of society, so she agrees to find a place for him. Now, thanks to the hunters, the town can get back to its old life. This boy has found work among the hunters, though not the one he dreamed of. Father and daughter came to this inconspicuous store to learn about new products and stock up on some potions. This place seems quite cozy. Everyone felt at home when they came here. This is where Yuji Ho worked. He greeted the customers nicely. He liked his job, even though it wasn't something he wanted to do. A girl saw Yuji Ho and asked her father to let her talk to the salesman. She was fascinated by everything related to hunting. This cute girl asked if he was really forced to work here because he had absolutely no skills. Her father immediately stopped her. He said it was unseemly to ask such questions. He apologized for his daughter. They took a few vials of red liquid into their basket. It's a potion that helps in fighting monsters. The boy said that there was nothing wrong with those words. He was already used to quietly admitting that he had no skills and had to deal with collecting resources and selling them. The girl looked at him. It was clear to her now. She asked not, but that didn't mean she was tactless. She asked just out of pure curiosity. But her father kept reprimanding her for it. She doesn't see it as a problem. She just asked a question she was curious about. Meanwhile, outside there is also an active mobilization going on and several tanks and an ambulance come past with a huge rumble. The girl and her father assume that a Rank 3 dungeon has reopened somewhere. The father wants to visit there and see everything with his own eyes. But they realize they'd better not go there. They don't have much skill either and can't deal with monsters effectively, even though they would like to. Yuji Ho is also observing the scene. He felt that the third Rank dungeon that was likely to open now would cause a lot of trouble. He said goodbye to his customers and bowed to them. But they continued to argue amongst themselves without paying attention to the guy. After they left, he began to think about how he could get into this dungeon, but he realizes that he can only dream about it. Suddenly, he gets a promotion. Now he can get new skills because his class has finally been upgraded to a working class. This pleases him and surprises him at the same time. But even this cannot help him to enter the dungeon of the third rank. After all, he still didn't have any skills. So he will have to follow hunters after battles and gather the leftover resources that those battles spawned. His job remains unrecognized, but this job at least allows him to earn his food and even his favorite hobby. His favorite hobby is reading ancient books. It's a hobby that really captivates him. He often dives headfirst into ancient texts, 
When there are no visitors, he takes a book and often sits with it until very late in the evening. In fact, he couldn't dream of anything more, but it brings him real satisfaction in life to study the world of alchemy. On one such day, as he sat reading an old book, he found it very difficult to breathe. He felt that he was short of air. After that, he started to feel sleepy so much. Perhaps he had not had enough sleep today so he could let himself fall asleep at the book. It's normal if you read a lot, but this time he wanted to sleep so badly. He couldn't handle the sleep, though he tried to fight it. So he decided to lie down right at his workplace and rested his head on his desk. He didn't notice how he fell into sleep so sweet and carefree. He really needed sleep now. The glowing rays connected him and the book, this tree that is depicted in it. This particular picture has magical power. Unexpectedly, Yuji Ho found himself in the forest depicted in his book. He was able to breathe in the clean forest air, but he didn't immediately realize what had happened. For a while, he slept sweetly, but when he woke up, he immediately tried to come to his senses, shaking off the sleep. After a while, he calmed down. Yuji Ho began to look around and realized that he was in a real forest in the dungeon. This forest is so beautiful, but he's never been here before, and he doesn't know how to navigate. As he tries to figure out what to do and where to go to get out of here, at some point he starts to think that this is all a dream. It's really very much like a dream. It's hard to make sense of it because everything is so real all around him. He doesn't know why he finds himself in this strange forest. It seems safe at first glance, but what could be lurking in it? But what could be lurking in it? He doesn't know. The silence of this forest frightens him. There are no animals or birds. He gets a bad feeling. He's trying to find any direction to get out of here. This environment is quite ominous. He notices fruits growing under an old tree. They are surrounded by a blue glow and emit special waves. Yuji Ho leans over these fruits to see what they are. He has never seen such fruits before. But now a little explanation is available to him. This is an ether grass. He was not aware of this property in plants before, although he has read many books about them. But these he sees for the first time. This flower has a special effect. It blocks the ether consumption of skills for 10 seconds. It's quite interesting if you make a potion from it. Hunters can save their ether that is needed to use skills. He wants to take these flowers with him or at least collect their juice, but he doesn't have a bottle with him to do that. So he thinks how better to take them with him. But suddenly he notices something more unusual. On one of the dilapidated and old trees, brittle leaves have blossomed. Yuji Ho thinks that this tree needs to be helped somehow or else it will dry up. Yuji Ho started thinking about how to help this tree or at least a branch. He treats this plant so carefully, he even told it that he would help it. That shows his kindness. He thought about the best way to help this tree. He could hardly save the trunk anymore. He was able to give some water from a nearby stream to these leaves so that the branches would heal. They actually got better. Ji Ho is getting new skills, plant friendliness and blessing. He didn't expect to get them since he hadn't gotten anything for five whole years. This branch feels so good now. It will take its roots and grow soon. It will get stronger and become a big tree. He can't believe his eyes. He doesn't understand why. The old tree dissolves into thin air. It literally disappeared right before his eyes. Probably a small plant will replace it. At this point, he wakes up. Or was he not even asleep? He realizes he is in a familiar place in his store. He never realized if it was a dream. It was so vividly realistic. He wipes his eyes and feels something sticking to his skin. He turns his attention to his hands. No, it couldn't have been a dream, for these marks were left on his hands. These mud marks are from the forest, so does that mean he was there? They only confirm that what he saw was real. That tree in the book, that's what he saw, and he went there to save it. It's still hard for him to realize it. But how did he get there? He's holding a real magic book. Maybe this book really is a special portal. He thought about it carefully and once again tried to give himself a logical explanation. Yuji Ho will still be able to enter this forest when he falls asleep, but that's something he has yet to test. So he decides to take another nap. And indeed, he got to the same place as soon as he fell asleep. Now this forest was much more spacious than it had seemed to him before. He had never heard of such a phenomenon as a dungeon that could be entered through sleep. Another amazing find came to his eyes. This is a great fortune. It's a beautiful shining apple. It's so rare and valuable it has an amazing effect. It increases the power of recovery and decreases its time. This sun apple is a very useful item. Yuji Ho is so happy to find it here. Although he knows how to make a recovery potion, which is quite popular among hunters, this apple will help make it more effective. Yuji Ho was finally able to take his gaze away from this apple, and what he saw struck him to the core. This is a whole orchard of such apples. How many potions could be made from them? A very useful potion. Yuji Ho had an idea. Mixing this apple with the juice of those flowers would make an even more wonderful potion. 
He should take some apples, but how to carry it all with him? He hadn't prepared. He had already decided that he would wrap his clothes with them, but suddenly something fell right on his face. He didn't realize what it was. It was a roomy sack that he needed right now. He can hold so many apples. It's a sign. It means you can pick them in this bag. It even had liquid flasks. And even though it's quite scary, Yu Ji Ho knows that this chance may never come again. He started picking these apples that were everywhere in the orchard. There were so many of them. At one of the hunter's stores in Seoul, people swept everything off the shelves. The salesman tried to apologize for the lack of goods. They said they'd have them in an hour, but the hunters here didn't believe them. They tried to find the goods they needed on the internet. But none of the stores in town had them. They're hurrying to the dungeon. They have an important fight tonight. An important guest has entered the store, and people are wondering if she is the famous sword witch, Seo Jin Ho. The people around her were looking at her equipment. She was the best, and of the best, she was studying some special glow. She fearlessly and nonchalantly made her way towards the counter, and everyone let her through. The line parted. She asked the store staff to get the general manager urgently. The manager greeted her very politely. He tried to be as courteous as possible. He didn't expect to see her here. But she didn't come here to enjoy this kind of conversation. She wants to know if they have the potion she asked about yesterday. But unfortunately, she's learned that the potion isn't ready yet, and she'll have to wait for a while. The store is not handling the workload. She feels like he's hiding something from her. They must have at least one vial in stock. She opens the map to find other stores nearby because she needs to find this potion. Yuji Ho is making a special potion. He's already mixed the basic ingredients. He measured everything carefully, so there's no mistake. These ingredients are too expensive to experiment with. He's passing the sun apple extract through a special tube to get the effect. It works. The apple extract creates such a bright glow. Yuji Ho is getting a new skill. It's so lucky to get several skills at once. Now he can call himself an alchemist. He finally got this skill. He succeeded. He invented this potion all by himself. But Yuji Ho was in no hurry to sell his product. It hadn't been tested yet. He's greeting another customer. This girl is in a hurry. She urgently needs to buy the potion. Her hurry makes Yuji Ho confused. She yells at the salesman to hurry up and find the right product. She seems to notice something on his table and it's exactly what she needs. The very recovery potion she was looking for. Yuji Ho wanted to say that it's not ready yet and needs to be tested. He's not sure about it, but he didn't have time to do that. The girl interrupted him. She said that the most important thing is that it works. But Yuji Ho said it's not for sale. The girl objected. She said she was in a hurry. She was sure that this potion wouldn't cause any problems, so she decided to buy it after all. She had no other options. She grabs the bottle, throws the money on the counter, and hurries away. She leaves Yuji Ho alone with his thoughts. Anxiety didn't leave him. Sio went to the dungeon to fight this enemy. First, she destroyed the moles that came her way. She had no trouble at all with the moles and was ready to fight the main boss who was so easy for me. Compared to him, this was child's play. She was used to having big prey. She rushed deep into the forest to find it and left the moles on the ground, even though they have valuable pelts. Let others take them. A couple of gathering boys in the forest who were gathering resources there noticed her. They recognized her too. They decided that she had destroyed the moles for nothing. They could have destroyed them too and gotten their skills. Now all they have to do is gather resources. They certainly shouldn't get in this woman's way. She has clearly done more than them. One of the companions told his friend Arthur the story of why is this woman now hunting alone when you have had unfortunate events happen to her. She told the boys to run away from here immediately. I think she found him. They spotted him. They were startled and their eyes filled with fear. They didn't expect to see him in this place. This dungeon is not considered the most dangerous dungeon. It's a creepy creature called a stalker. Its eyes burn with a terrible fire and it is preparing to destroy everyone in its path. She must fight him. She must defeat this poisonous monster. Why are they still here? They're standing there and they can't move. They are frightened. They shouldn't interfere. She reminds them of that once again. They might get hurt by the stalker, so they need to leave immediately. Which Sio has already confronted him. She's not afraid of him. But it's an unequal fight. She delivers blow after blow to distract the stalker and doesn't give him a second to retaliate. But the stalker doesn't feel like he needs to fear anyone here. The stalker proves to be stronger. He pushes the girl away and forces her to bounce back a few steps with his husband and his eyes are throwing sparks. The guys rush to run away from here. They need to get as far away as possible and the stalker has great power and he can get to them. She's almost desperate she started to think of her lover whom she lost recently. Hen Oppa was her best friend. He was so brave. He would definitely help her now. But she knows he'll never come back. She has to accept that. She'll have to fight alone. Now that he's gone, the only hope is this potion. She opens it to drink it and hopes it will help her. 
She drinks it. This is truly her last chance. Without it, she is doomed. She didn't realize she had swallowed the entire contents of the vial. She's even surprised. This potion tastes so good, it gives her strength. She feels her power. Now she stands her ground more firmly than ever. And the determination to continue this fight awakens in her. She is overwhelmed by the ether. She is ready. The stalker is finding it hard to resist her now. This fight becomes his last. She flies straight at the pursuer with frantic force. Seo aims an endless number of balls at him. The stalker is destroyed by the power of these beams. They hurt him so badly. He begins to collapse. The sword which can't believe her victory. Did she really do it? It was so easy. Almost as easy as dealing with the moles. Not only had she recovered from the battle thanks to this potion, but she hadn't used up any ether. Did this potion really help her destroy her pursuer? It's hard to believe. It's really a unique item. She remembered the store she bought it from. Now she definitely wouldn't forget it. It was another endlessly sunny and carefree day in Seoul. The bell of Yu Ji Ho's store rang especially sharply. Who opens the door with such force? Ji Ho sees that formidable woman on his doorstep again. She makes him shudder. There is so much strength and power in her. She seems to be quite evil. She probably didn't like the potion. That's what Yu Ji Ho thinks. He's already ready to listen to the claims about the potion he warned about. She leans over him, grabs it, and shakes him. All the customers in the store immediately recognize her. They're already telling each other the rumors about her. They can't believe it. She sees that people are paying attention to her and apologizes for her rude behavior. Yuji Ho wonders if the potion she bought is okay. He thought he was about to hear outrage. But it turns out the potion was fine for her. She's never seen anything like it. He's very pleased. He certainly heard that she's the one who took down that monster. And he complimented her. She wants to know more about the potion. So Yuji Ho takes out the sun apple he made the potion from and shows it to her. He explains that they are part of it, which is why its properties are so impressive. She starts asking about the apple, but Yuji Ho doesn't want to tell her about this forest that he learned about recently. It could be dangerous. He doesn't say anything about where he got this apple. He only notes that he's very glad that it was her potion that helped her. So Jin notices vials of a blue potion. She asks what it is. She has never seen such a blue color before. The vendor says it's a cold resistance potion. It will help her withstand extreme cold. This is good news for Su Jin. It's much more effective than any potion from the store because it's concentrated enough. It's because Yu Ji Ho has a lot of winter berries in his garden. He grew these berries and just harvested them and was eventually able to achieve such a concentration. He collected a large amount of frost berries and brought them to his lab to improve the all-famous frost resistance potion. He gained a welcome boost to his alchemy skill in the process of making it. He was also able to make a cool version of a long-known potion that would be able to help many. He made it himself, so it's worthy of a promotion in alchemy. He tells the girl all this, but she thinks he's lying. There can't be only berries in one place. It doesn't work that way. Yu Ji Ho sees her suspicions. Seo Hyun finds it strange. He realized that she doesn't believe him. He knows the whole truth, and that's enough for him. She decides not to ask any more unnecessary questions and just buy those potions before they're sorted out. She takes the box with her. Seo puts a huge wad of money right on the counter and asks her not to write a check. He can set up this nice guy who probably stole it all. Yu Ji Ho is a decent man, and he wants the money back. He yells after her that it will be too much, but she won't listen to anything. She says it's not even enough. She turns to him and asks him what his name is. Yu Ji Ho says his name in embarrassment. She smiles such a sweet smile at him and tells him that he has a wonderful name and it suits him. She says goodbye to him, tells him that they will definitely see each other again, and leaves the store. Yu Ji Ho sinks back into his magical forest where he feels so peaceful. He feels like a true master of this place. He sorts through his finds, glowstones, firestones, and winter berries. Winter berries are not enough for him as he needs to replenish his supply of frost resistance potion. He is surprised that this forest, which has no monsters, has so many useful things even more than any other. It's a true blessing. But he doesn't know what this place is, but he is definitely grateful to it. Thanks to this forest, he'll soon become quite a successful salesman. Usually this forest is quiet and you can hear any rustle. It seems like something stirred in the grass. Yuji Ho can't figure out where the sound is coming from or who is making it. He's never seen animals here before. He's scared. What if it's a monster? He tries to identify the source of the sound and walks straight towards it to find out what is there as soon as possible. He has already had time to think about the danger. Well, a completely harmless creature appeared in front of him. It's a pterodrone, a cute bug. Although it's called a monster, it's quite harmless. Yuji Ho has heard of them before, but he's never seen one. They are so adorable.
What are they doing here and where are they running to? They seem so defenseless. Plus, they're clearly not happy about something. They've gone behind the transparent wall and Yuji Ho can't penetrate it. She's probably standing there to protect him from danger. But he wants to understand where and why these pteradrons have gone. It seems these little creatures greatly overestimate themselves and their powers. They went to fight demonic ants that are much bigger and stronger than them. They fight these giants so bravely. And even though Yuji Ho is protected from them by a wall and he gets uneasy at the sight of this battle, the ants gave a good beating to the tetradrons who were so stupid to go and fight them. But they had no choice. These ants are very dangerous because they are poisonous. A bite from one of these ants is very dangerous. The consequences can be irreparable. He reads information about ants just like he reads information about pterodrones. That's interesting. It says they're the size of a car, and the ants are the size of a five-ton truck, but they look small. As the battle continues, the ants mercilessly destroy the pterodrones. They endure it with dignity and try to resist to the end. The ants' bites are so painful, but they don't back down. They fight so desperately. Poor things. They're having such a hard time. He can't understand why these harmless little guys not only accepted this fight, but came to it first. He's afraid the pterodrons will lose to the ants, but he genuinely wants to help them, but doesn't know how. It turns out he can't intervene in this battle and help his pterodrons defeat the intruders who are trying to destroy the forest. The notice says that the pterodrons are losing the battle and he definitely wants to help them, so he agrees to the offer to fight the ants. He can't intervene, he can only help from the outside. He has to give them some essence so they can recover and defeat the ants. He has some essence crystals with him. What luck, that should be enough. He does not hesitate to use these crystals to help the pterodrons he blesses them, and the essence crystals channel power to the little warriors. The pterodrons are first relieved and then elated. They feel no more pain and they are ready to fight again. The essence has given them so much power. They're directing all that energy against the ants without sparing themselves at all. They seem to have turned the game around and the ants, who appeared so strong recently, have lost their position. They blasted them to smithereens, tossing them around. The ants hit trees and fell. They spun around in a magical whirlwind and became helpless. The pterodrons are winning. Yuji Ho was so happy to see their victory that he had helped them in. He couldn't help but sympathize with these adorable creatures. The Terradrons rejoiced. The ant squad was defeated. Their goal was achieved thanks to this stranger. They thanked him so sincerely if it wasn't for him. They wouldn't have been able to defeat the ants, and then it would have been the end of them. But they were literally saved by Yuji Ho. Surprisingly, these small creatures prevented this forest from becoming a monster haven. The Terradrons want to thank their savior. They bring him valuable resources, and he can't believe his eyes. Is this really all for him? It's unbelievable. Yuji Ho is grateful to them. It's so touching on one hand. On the other hand, he wants to say that there's no need to give everything to him. They might need these resources, too. He accepts their gifts with gratitude. He realizes that the Terradrons are indeed brave and grateful. The wall is opening up. There are no more boundaries for him. He is now a true protector of this forest and is allowed to pass on. The wall disappears and the fog dispels. Now it will be spacious, but at the same time, he will have more responsibility. And he'll have more work to do. He'll have to stay in this territory for a while. He's got a new space to explore. He still has so much to learn. Yuji Ho is so happy. He's full of inspiration and is rushing towards adventure. Which Seo Jin Hyo's feat has not gone unnoticed in the online hunting community. This event has become one of the most discussed on the forums. Cho Hua Young. A girl from the Fire Guild is also actively discussing it. She, like other users, doubts that Seo Jin Hyo was able to defeat this monster alone. And the forum users are supporting those doubts. They can't believe it either. After all, she became a loner some time ago and always fights alone. But perhaps all this time she's been deceiving them. About her lover who disappeared in the dungeon, users can say anything. They think her being alone is a stupid decision. So much has been said about him in these three years. And community members feel like it's time for her to forget about him. Hua Young resents this cynicism. She writes in chat that they can't talk like this, but they don't care about her. They aren't willing to discuss the topic anymore. But she seems like she would like to discuss the topic further. She feels really bad that they don't want to talk to her. She's been sitting at the computer for so long. A man comes up to her. He wants to distract her from chatting on the internet, especially since she is sitting without light. He turns on the light so she doesn't mess up her eyes. He talks about how important it is to take care of your eyesight. But Zhou Hua Young says that she's much more comfortable in the dark as well. She's used to sitting at the computer in the dark. She asks him if he brought her the information she needs. He begins his report. He says he was there yesterday and didn't notice anything strange. He was in that store and saw a simple hunter in his wares. There's nothing special about him. 
The girl concludes that he has nothing to do with Seo Jin Hyo's success. Then what is the reason for her success? However, he remembers one detail. There was one unusual item on sale that can't be found anywhere else. It was a unique sun apple. It's unclear where he got them. He admits that he saw these apples for the first time. They are so rare and unique. He also said that the price of the potion that contains sun apple concentrate is too low. Now Zhou Hua Young has everything falling into place. The sun apple potion is quite effective. He doesn't realize how valuable it is. It's unknown where he found it. It's never explained to him what kind of foolishness he's doing. The man says that perhaps he doesn't know the value of this product, which is why the price is so low. That's one possibility. The other seems too unbelievable. The girl says that he just isn't greedy. That's why he sells this elixir so cheap. The girl is going to take a look at this store and its owner with her own eyes to understand him better. Her assistant offers her to prepare a car for this trip, but she rejects this offer. He tells her that she is certainly not the chairman, but her position is high enough and she could use the car, but she doesn't want to. Yu Ji Ho is warming himself by the fire in his forest. He decided to do a little watering after a long walk. He feels that it's cold enough in the forest, and it's nice to warm his hands by the fire he made with the lighter he brought with him. He ponders why that wall has disappeared and why the fog is dispersed. The areas here are quite large. He walked around the forest for a while, but he was so tired. Overall, this forest is no different from what he has seen before. There was nothing unusual about this part of the forest. So why was it closed? Suddenly, he comes to the realization that not all of the forest is so safe. It opens up to him gradually so as not to take him over at once. He senses that there are dangers deep in the forest. He thinks he shouldn't go in there now. He has a bad feeling. He's already explored some part of it. Now he should go back. He was about to leave, but the Terradrons came to him. They brought him many gifts. They look so sad. They seem to want something from him. Did the ants attack them again? They brought him the seeds of the fog chasing flowers, and they're happy to give him this gift. They are so sincere in presenting the seeds to their savior. One of them is a little bigger than the others. Perhaps he is the chief among them. He never ceases to be amazed at their courage. He realizes that they came straight from that dreadful place. Did they really go there for him to bring those seeds? It's so risky. They want to ask him for something, something more than what he did for them in the battle with the ants. And that request seems pretty scary. That little boy is crying. He's in so much pain. He's asked for his help in saving their queen. She's in great danger. Of course, Yuji Ho realizes that he has to do everything he can to help these cute kids. They've done so much for this forest. Yuji Ho decides to pet one of these cuties on the head. It feels so good to him. He hopes it will comfort him a little. He has a surprise for them. These recovery potions made from sun apples will come in handy, just like the poison resistance potion should help them in this battle. Ants are very poisonous. He poured the battle boost balls into a huge bowl and placed it all on the ground next to the pteradrons. Now he could have no fear for them. They would gain a large amount of resilience and strength. They should be able to handle any enemy. They enjoyed eating the tasty and nutritious treats. They have so much strength now. A little motivation wouldn't hurt. Directed by Yuji Ho, the pterodrone army headed out to destroy the enemies. Yuji Ho was startled when he saw that hole opening up right in the air. He knew that there were evil forces present somewhere nearby, and he wasn't wrong. This nest of demonic ants was hovering right above him. The place these ants come from is so ominous. Of course they don't live here. They only found a way to enter here through the portal. These demonic ants are much bigger than the ones he has seen. They're huge. It looks like they actually weigh five tons. But the Terradrons know no fear. They only go forward, disarming their opponents with their determination. The ants carry the energy of the dark underground, their eyes glowing with bright demonic fire. They certainly don't know what fear is. Terradrons are actually much weaker, but they have no fear at all. Now that's real courage. Yu Ji Ho witnesses a terrifying battle. The Terradrons are surprisingly effective at destroying the ants, thanks to the potions they've drunk. And now they can toss a huge ant aside in one move. That's not to say the Terradrons don't suffer from ants. The ants manage to land their blow on them too, and the little ones cry out in pain. A warning pops up in front of him. He can only intervene in the battle once. This time he needs to use three units of essence to swat the winged ant that flew into scout. But how can he do it otherwise? His arms aren't strong enough to destroy this huge ant and Yu Ji Ho is having second thoughts. Will his intervention be decisive? After all, they may need more help again in the future, and then he won't be able to help anymore. It's a difficult choice. He sees a huge ant approaching him. He's very scary. It's not just any ant, it has wings. He flew here to see if his group needed reinforcements and it doesn't seem to be going well. If he can fly back, the group will get reinforcements and they can defeat the Terradrons. 
Yu Ji Ho can't let that happen. If he calls for reinforcements, the situation will get much worse. It seems this ant needs to be swatted. He decides to do so. He takes the three essences in his hand to use them. Although it might be a mistake, one must make this decision. He directs the essence beams at the flying demonic ant. It becomes unwell, so unwell that it loses its orientation in space. This ant is making strange noises. It seems to be the last thing it said in its life, because the next moment it will be destroyed. Yuji Ho struck the ground. The flying ant is finished, but he won't be able to help his team anymore. This thought terrifies him. He has to make the right strategic decisions and take responsibility for them. That flying ant won't be able to call for reinforcements. Zhou Huan Hyo came to the very shop that has been much talked about lately. She didn't have any trouble finding it. This place looks rather inconspicuous. Did the famous sword witch Seo Jin Hyun really come here? But she was able to defeat the stalker. This makes her think that this place is not what it seems at first glance. Don't underestimate it. She must find out what secrets lurk behind those old-fashioned doors. But soon Zhou Huan Hyo realizes that the store is closed, even though it's business hours. Why is the owner so careless with his business? It's fine if he's out for lunch. But it says open on the door, which is very strange. There's a janitor working here. Maybe he can tell us where the salesman is. He says this store hasn't been open since yesterday. And lately it's been closed a lot, even during business hours. Jo Juan Hyo is worried. She's sure that everything is connected. Nothing just happens for no reason. It's all very strange. Who is he, the salesman? Where is he going? There are more and more questions and no answers. He's definitely a suspect in a dark business. People don't just disappear like that, and sun apples don't just disappear. Yu Ji Ho destroyed the ant. He looks at his hands. The golden glow of ether remains on them. The ant can no longer do its job. We can only hope their reconnaissance plan wasn't too clever. They're not very smart. The demonic ants continue their assault. They needed support, and now that the scout is gone, they can only go wild. The pterodrons are holding their defenses. This confrontation is becoming increasingly violent. The strongest will win. And that fittest is the Terradron army. They are advancing. The demon ants are terrified. They don't stand a chance. They have to retreat. The leader of the army can breathe a sigh of relief. He was so worried. This battle seemed unequal. And it was unequal for the demonic forest intruders. The Terradrons don't hide their happiness. They're dancing around Yuji Ho. He saved their queen. And with that, he saved their colony from destruction. Yuji Ho watches their happiness. They have saved the queen. She has already been freed. It's so wonderful. They carry their queen on a stretcher and treat her with the utmost care. The ants held her captive. She is badly injured. The queen looks very tired and frazzled. She has not gotten the fairest role in this game. Her eyes are so unhappy. You just can't look at her without compassion. She's having a hard time, but she tries to get up to extend her exhausted hand to Yu Ji Ho. He asks her not to worry about him. He doesn't need the honors given through strength at all. He asks her to conserve her strength. Yu Ji Ho takes pity on the unfortunate creature. She holds on very courageously and steadfastly despite her illness. And it's incredibly touching. She wants to make a patronage contract with Yu Ji Ho. And he, of course, agrees to help them. He just wants them to do well. The queen, along with her legion, takes an oath of allegiance to him. The army begins to improve. Someone gets wings and a spirit of leadership. Now it's Captain Teradrin, an officer who will take care of strategic command. His wings make him less vulnerable and more maneuverable. They give him the ability to observe the battle from above and make decisions. Yu Ji Ho is very excited to watch the evolution of the Pterodrons. They are now going to be the best army ever. Also during the evolution, Captain Pterodron becomes an efficient warrior with huge claws. With the help of his claws, he can destroy offenders. He has become so serious and thoughtful, he can scare a whole army of enemies with his looks alone. But speaking of combat capabilities, it's tradition for the Pterodrons to bring gifts of gratitude to their patron. This time you can't see the end of the column of bugs carrying gifts. Yu Ji Ho once again doesn't know what to make of their incorrigible generosity. There's so much of it. Too much. What deserves his special attention is the particular type of rare seed he holds in the palm of his hand. It is the seed of the fruit of the tree. He has yet to grow this seed, but he is already eager to learn of its properties. The boy is thinking about setting up a small camp. The shelter is good for him. He spends more and more time here. The next day, an ant nest portal opened in one of the dungeons that Yu Ji Ho didn't have access to. A group of hunters went to investigate. They undertook a risky endeavor to find the demonic ant queen. They came here to stir up a nest of dangerous monsters and earn huge money, but disappointment awaits them. But someone has been here before them and wiped out all the ants. This seems strange because the dungeon has only recently opened. While they were discussing this problem, 
they discovered an even bigger disappointment. What they saw shocked the former hunters. This enormous formation of matter was nothing but a huge nest of demonic ants. Now they're going to be rich, but they're in no hurry to rejoice. This nest seems empty. Although it doesn't lose its demonic energy, it's not worth playing around with. They spend some time in confusion. Why is this dungeon open if it's cleared? It's supposed to be closed. So some kind of monster is here. They check the ant's nest one more time, this time more boldly, but there's no one there. They look under their feet. The ground here is crumpled. This can only mean one thing. One of the hunters asks everyone to pay attention to the ground. They look and realize it's too late. This huge giant's palm print where they're standing inspires inhuman terror. The huge creature will not spare them, and they don't immediately decide what to do, whether to run or immediately start preparing for the worst. No one wants to be destroyed by a giant. That's the end no one wants. We have to leave now. There's not much time. The most determined hunter has already rushed out. Hyung is calling him, but his friends continue to stand in a daze. He's trying to convince them to run. Don't they value their lives? The giant won't blink an eye when they fall under his clutches. They hardly agree to leave. It's short-sighted of them. To put it mildly, a photo of this print blew up the internet. The hunter community was ablaze with yet another idea that had already become rife with gossip and speculation. The Fire Guild discussed the dangers of this find. It has been a long time since the hunters have had to deal with problems of this magnitude. Kim hong Seok says that they should keep the situation under control. He asks that all news be reported to him immediately. Who is this giant demon? This mystery needs to be solved as soon as possible. This isn't just a game. There seems to be some serious trouble brewing. They can only guess who it is. It's most likely a monster of mythical rank. It might be hiding to strike at the most unexpected moment. This annoys Kim hong Seok. He's used to keeping everything under his strict control. Now the situation is getting out of control. It could lead to irreparable consequences if the monster can get into the city. He can't let that happen. He won't forgive himself. We need to mobilize all resources and be prepared for the worst. While Yuji Ho is standing behind his cash register, people in jackets are busy solving really important problems. While everything is calm in the city, people are enjoying simple things. They are enjoying every day as if it were their last. Yuji Ho decided to spend this summer day with his friends. He has already left the house to meet his girlfriend. She's especially beautiful today, so it seems to him... He can't look at her without noticeable embarrassment. He's always had feelings for her, but he's been diligent in hiding it. He greets her and hopes his voice doesn't shake too obviously. Ji Ha looks absolutely marvelous. She tries to apologize for her embarrassing tardiness. She made him wait and she's so embarrassed. Yu Ji Ho says she shouldn't make excuses. It's totally unnecessary. He's sweating profusely, either from the heat or excitement. She ran towards him so fast that she tripped and fell. She's so clumsy. Ji Ho tries not to show his laughter, but it's funny. He helped her up. The book fell out of her hands, but it's intact. Her friend says it's not the book that matters. The important thing is that she's in one piece. She tries to make excuses for her fall. Lately, she's put her training on hold and looked at reading. Yuji Ho is just about ready to hand her a new batch of books. She's incredibly happy. She's been waiting for these rare books so much. She has a small gift for her friend, too. This ancient book she bought especially for him. It looks beautiful. Everyone who buys books like this at the store, as the salesman told her, takes them just for the interior. They are really beautiful. But Jiha realizes that there's more to it than that for the day. Yuji will definitely not have it gathering dust. He's so happy to accept this gift. Yuji Ho notices something unusual. It looks like the book has found its owner and wants to tell him so. Amazingly, it's almost like a living being. The book shone in his hands with a beautiful green glow. This is definitely a sign. The book is as tired of waiting for this meeting as Ji Ho. He wants to find out from Ji Hanuna what properties this book has. She, she doesn't know anything else about it. Even the salesman couldn't understand anything about her. The only thing he said was that it was impossible to write anything in it. That's why people returned it. It was just useless. Interesting. The book continues to glow in his hand, but this glow is visible only to him. Nuna notices his puzzled look. She already feels like he didn't like it. But Yu Ji Ha hurries to convince her otherwise. Now she can relax and be happy that her gift fits. Her friend says the book won't just sit on the shelf. He promises to put it to good use. He knows what he's talking about. He brought the book to his store and tried to write something in it. He failed, just like the previous owners. But why? Suddenly he feels thoughts in his head. He realizes that this book can only be written in with a special pen and special ink. He needs to get the feather of the Thunderbird. But how to do it? It's probably not an easy task. It's not as easy as Yuji thought. This bird can be dangerous. 
He's almost desperate and decides to give up the idea, or at least postpone it until better times. In desperation, he places his palms on the paper. The same greenish lights appear around them. A pleasant warmth emanates from the paper. Yuji Ho has learned the skill of good handwriting. What a useful skill. His hands are still the same. He feels a slight tingling sensation. I wonder how much his handwriting has changed. He can't wait to check it. For that, he needs to write something. He takes a pencil in his hand and makes his first attempts at writing. His hand guides the pencil. Writing is so easy. He wrote a small text about a thunderbird on a regular sheet of paper as he could not use a book. His handwriting improved a lot. He found it so interesting and enjoyable and decided to do some more experiments with his handwriting. It's not perfect, but it's much more legible now. Anyway, Yuji Ho is grateful to the book for this wonderful skill. He missed it so much in his life. Suddenly, he was visited by strange, heavy feelings. These feelings were similar to the ones he felt when he was near dark portals. He left the store to get a breath of fresh air, and he saw a horrifying sight near his store. The gates had opened so close. It's right next to the exit. He looked into it. He was so scared, but he got an explanation that said he could enter the Thunderbird dungeon. The message says it's perfectly safe, but he continues to have doubts. What if it's a trap? This huge hole in space doesn't look harmless at all. Finally, he makes up his mind. The first thing he sees when he gets there is a waterfall of incredible beauty. He can't get enough of it. It's so beautiful. He stands and stares at the waterfall as if mesmerized. This place doesn't seem so scary to him anymore. He doesn't yet realize if the Thunderbird really lives here. It doesn't seem like such a beautiful place to be inhabited by monsters. He heard an unfamiliar sound that alerted him. He immediately turned around. That huge bird flew right above his head. It was that big. Yuji Ho raised his head to look at it and could barely stay on his feet. Its scale made him completely dizzy. At the sight of this bird, Yuji Ho's heart goes into a tizzy. He tries to realize its size. Compared to it, he looks like a small bug. It seems to be a difficult task. Yuji Ha doesn't know if it's even possible. Maybe he shouldn't waste his time on it. Suddenly, something falls on his shoulder. It makes him feel a little ticklish. He was lucky. It's a feather that fell from a bird. And it's not the only one. Ji Ho raises his head again and sees the feathers falling on him one after another. He's been especially lucky lately. The bird herself gave him her feathers. It hurriedly flew away. He didn't even have to hunt. How nice of her. Yu Ji Ho started to pick up those feathers. They are so soft and beautiful. He even felt a little embarrassed in front of the other hunters. But that's not all. Now he has to get the ink. Without it, nothing will work. He thinks about it. After a while, a fresh thought struck him. Now he knows where to find the ink. The Teradrons just had some green herb extract. Yuji Ho wants to ask them for some. And they certainly didn't refuse him. These bugs know how to appreciate help and they certainly don't suffer from greed. A few moments and the extract is found. Yuji Ho is grateful to him. The kit is now assembled. Now we can begin the most interesting part. After all the preparations are done, we can begin to unravel the mysteries of this book. He can't wait to meet them. What is hidden in this book of endless spells? Yuji Ha is ready to solve all the mysteries. He hasn't been this curious in a long time. This is the moment of truth. The quill touches the paper. Yuji Ha's hand trembles slightly. Unusual symbols appear around the pen. After a while, the entire space around Yuji Ho appears to be filled, or and he himself floats in the air. He didn't expect such an effect. They appear everywhere, circling around the tree and creating an area of dazzling glow on it. It is difficult for a human to look at this dazzling light, but Yuji Ha continues to watch it. Strange symbols appear on the tree. Yuji Ha has never seen them before. They appear one by one on the bark. Once upon a time, people learned how to use ancient magic with runes. It is a very complex science that requires careful handling. Ancient magicians discovered four main powers that they used through spells. These are creation and preservation, meant to create, and also change and resolution, meant to bring change and purification. All of these forces are interconnected with each other. When people learned to use these forces, they tried to preserve information about them and pass it on to their descendants. This was made possible by the runes. Now Yu Ji Ho will be able to touch the ancient wisdom, which itself came into his hands. She considered him a worthy guardian who would be able to use the knowledge for good. He still found it hard to believe it, he did not expect such a revelation from this unassuming book. He continues to stare at the tree. The runes still glow with a magical radiance on the tree trunk. He wants to understand what the signs mean. Obviously, it is connected to the book of infinite spells, but how to find out what they mean? Maybe the book should give him a clue. Unexpectedly, Yuji Ho noticed that this was the same place where he found himself for the first time. He recognized this tree as the same sprout he had once helped. It had grown so fast. 
Yujiha took the Book of Endless Spells and the Thunderbird Feather to rewrite those runes. He rewrote them and discovered the true meaning of this spell of destruction and the power of fire. The words themselves came to him. He was surrounded by flickering beams of fire, harbingers of the emergence of the energy of destruction. They were so beautiful. He continued to take notes in his book and began to realize the meanings and implications of the ancient runes. This phrase on the tree is one of the spells of the energy of destruction. Rays of flame emerge directly from the lines written by Yu Ji Ha. They envelop their creator and penetrate this world with their own special mission. He tore a leaf out of the book and was finally able to obtain a spell scroll filled with special energy. He had created it himself. Now he would have to create 99 more scrolls like it. It wasn't a dusty job, all in all. But Yuji Ho tensed up. Even though he had torn a leaf out of the book, it was able to restore itself. This is another marvelous property of this book. That is why it is called Infinite. Yuji Ho is hardworking and is already ready to begin the task the book has given him. He has no idea yet how this scroll can be used. He has yet to discover the wonderful world of spells for himself. Cho Hua Young was finally able to visit Yuji Ha's store. She had been looking forward to this moment. She came to talk to the shop owner. The store was permanently closed and she had spent so much time in a pointless search for some life in this place. She slammed her strong and formidable palm on the counter to create as formidable an impression as possible. Now she could express to the owner all the grievances she had accumulated during this time. It had taken her a long time to find it, and she was about to lose her patience, which she already lacked. In her rage, she reminded him of the witch Hyo Jin. Yu Jiha apologized to the customer for her long absence. It seemed to have calmed her down a bit. He was so embarrassed to admit to having his own personal affairs, but he still wouldn't give away his attitude towards the special dungeon. He tried to justify himself for taking a long break from work. After all, everyone was entitled to a little rest and personal matters. However, Cho Hua Young didn't come here to listen to these excuses. She has to find the special goods that have been rumored. She says that perhaps she overreacted and can forgive him for being absent. She looked for him so fiercely herself. She introduced herself to him and held out her card. The tone of the head of the fire guild became unusually friendly. Yu Ji Ho looked at the business card. She asked if this place sold unusual items for hunters. He replied that they did. She hurriedly asked him about the very recovery potion made from sun apple concentrate. It interested her the most. He said that he actually sells that potion as well as a winter strawberry potion. These items have become very popular lately. She was very happy to hear that. So all her searching wasn't in vain. Yuji Ho started rummaging through the shelves. He wants to give her something to thank her for waiting. He looked at the shelf and was horrified. He felt very ashamed. He had sold everything and didn't even bother to replenish his stock. He had to let her know about it. But his bewildered look did not arouse her pity. She was amazed at the carelessness of this employee once again. Yuji Ho was so engrossed in helping the Terradrons, but they really needed his assistance. And this was a book he had immersed himself in. He spent so much time on it, but he forgot about work. He's ready to fall to the ground in shame. This girl, she needed his wares so badly all this time, and he couldn't fulfill her expectations. Hua Young wants to explode again, but she sees his almost childlike confusion and immense shame and tries to restrain herself. That would be too cruel. She's disappointed, but he promised to create those potions tomorrow. She already turned around and was about to leave, but Yu Ji Ho remembered about the scroll. This is the last chance. He asked the upset customer to wait. Hua Young turned around. She didn't hope for anything anymore, but now the seller will definitely redeem himself for sure. She sees a beautiful scroll with a fire spell in his hands. Yu Ji Ho doesn't know if he should give this scroll away, but there's nothing else for him to do. He holds out the scroll to Hua Young and she accepts it. He tells her many interesting things about it. She seems to have accepted the apology again. This scroll is just what she needs. She couldn't find a better mistress for it. She took it in her hands and how could she not start a fire in here? The scroll burst into flames. Hua Young becomes one with this spell. She's so excited to get it, especially to get it for free. She was lucky to get in after all. Yu Ji Ho is happy he was able to calm his agonizing guilt somehow. He bowed to her for forgiveness and managed to notice her staff that didn't glow before. The scroll must have had that effect on him. Surprisingly, he was lucky. He had met the Mistress of Fire. Her staff was definitely not glowing when she came here. So he wasn't wrong. Once again, his blessing brings him luck and favorable coincidences. That same day, Cho Hua Young went to the dungeon to try out the power of the scroll as soon as possible. This spider dungeon is excellent. She gained such excitement and confidence along with it. She carried herself into battle with such frantic power. 
She was also surprised when the strike of her staff was so strong, an unexpected effect. The staff gained the energy of this magic spell and began to glow with a fiery flame. Its power had increased manifold. Zhou Hua Young was pleased with this news. She rushes to use this property in battle. She's full of confidence in the sacred hatred of fire. The spider dropped its poison ballast on her. She managed to bounce back in time. Her companions care for her, but she is not the type to take care of herself. This girl is hot and fearless, and she's ready to prove it once again. The spiders have surrounded them, their red eyes glowing in the ominous darkness. They haven't realized who they've messed with yet. No wonder, stupid creatures. One of the fire guild hunters offers to retreat. He's already scared, but Cho Hua Young forbids him to even think about it. She can handle them. She can literally feel her inner firepower. She will fight to the last man. This incredible energy just overwhelms her. She raises her staff to get the most energy out of it. The staff creates beams of fire energy. The spiders are about to be in trouble. She directs a concentrated beam of magical flame. The energy of destruction is on its way. The flames envelop everything around. It's heading straight for the monsters. Hua Young hadn't felt such power in her hands in a long time. The spiders had a hard time. They were destroyed almost instantly. The flames did terrible things to them. The fire guild didn't expect Hua Young's staff to have such an effect. Now the monsters were finished. No one had ever gotten rid of them so easily. The guild leader thought about what could make her staff stronger. She came to the conclusion that it was most likely the scroll. The items in Yuji Ho's store were indeed very useful. She should visit this place again. The owner of the hunter shop is busily making preparations. He is catching up on his work and preparing a large amount of recovery potion. He's already very tired, but all this may not be enough. Along with the new skill came popularity to him. He will have to work harder. He hoped that a couple cases of Hua Young's potions would be enough. He looked at his watch. Time is running out. She could show up at any minute, and he still had to pack the goods. The bell rang and the store door opened. A famous guest appeared on the doorstep. Yuji Ha is happy to announce that everything is ready, but he notices that someone else has come along with her. She didn't say she was bringing friends. He gets nervous. She addresses him in such a serious tone. Who is this man and why did he come along with her? He hadn't prepared himself for serious conversations, but he will have to participate in them. Hua Young asks to discuss more serious matters than the potion. What could it be? Yuji wondered. They opened the suitcase in front of him. It's certainly not magical, but it has some power in it. It's a huge amount of money. Yuji Ha is excited. He doesn't understand what this is all about. Why did they put this in front of him? He's at a complete loss. He's never seen this kind of money in his life. But what kind of offer is behind them? He's so embarrassed and scared. Cho Hua Young rushes over to calm him down and thank him for the scroll he gave her yesterday. She reports that its properties are excellent. She says that she can't help but pay for this wonderful gift. She's not used to accepting such unique things for nothing. Hua Young is sure that it's unfair. This pleases Yuji Ho and he feels some relief, but it doesn't last long. She says she's willing to take care of the convenience of payment for him, and instead of giving it in cash, transfer it to an account. Hua Young has never met a man in her life who refuses money so easily. She wants to know why he refused. He says it was a sincere gift and he did it to apologize. He didn't even think about money back then. But Zhou Hua Young and her date say that his modesty borders on foolishness. To prove it, they want to tell a parable about a goose. A goose that lays golden eggs can, of course, give them away for free. And at first, people will be happy with his gifts, but it's not that simple. Ji Ho naively thinks that this would be the beginning of a beautiful new world, but he sees things through the prism of his kindness. This world is cruel, but the girl dispels his illusions and informs him what would then become of the goose. His fate would be sad, because greed and hatred are inexorable. Then he realized it. With that, Hua Young proceeded with her proposal. She offered him to become part of their fire guild. This proposal sounded so solemn. It comes as a surprise to him. Hua Young wants to tell him a little about the benefits of cooperating with them. And this money, as proof that their guild knows how to be generous, she brought it here on purpose. Yuji has heard of this guild before. He knows of its wealth and is confident in its integrity. He says that it wasn't necessary to prove it this way. But she remarks that she only wanted to express the guild's favor to him in this way, not for the first time calling him master. She introduces him to Qian Hiao, the guild's head alchemist, who is pleased with his work. She turns on her maximum charm and hopes that at least his example can inspire an inveterate no-nonsense person like Yu Jiho. She talks about how the guild takes care of its employees, the opportunity to learn and develop, to use modern equipment, but that doesn't get him either. He's not stupid, as many evil and greedy people seem to be, but he values his freedom above all else. 
Yuji Ho is pleased to hear such respectful treatment, and he's glad that his talent is appreciated. He thanks them for that, and they've already taken that gratitude as a sign of agreement, but they're going to have a hard time with this humble guy. At first, Hua Young thinks she's got it right, but then she starts to have doubts, if it's all that clear. She can't stand it and wonders what he really meant. She raises her voice at him again. It's so rude of her. She's heard his rejection and she's having a hard time accepting it. It seems impertinent to her. Who does he think he is if he thinks he can refuse the fire guild? Is he really a fool or is he just pretending? Why Young wants to get to the truth, he's obviously hiding something. Who does he serve? She's not hiding her anger. But Jung Hyul urges her to keep quiet. Nothing will work anymore. They just need to leave him alone and then he'll come to his senses. That's a wise decision. Yu Ji Ho has his principles too. He can't abandon the Teradrons who swore loyalty to him and to whom he promised patronage. Nor can he betray his friends who have made him acquire all of this. This decision is not as easy for him as it may seem from the outside. He tries to explain it all to them. At the same time, he is truly sorry to refuse such wonderful people. This offer is a great honor for him. They realize that he has his position. He can't abandon a store he cares about. So they try to get in his position and stop the entreaties. But of course he remembers the parable of the goose. So he decides to raise the price of his unique potions, including for the fire guild. Cho Hua Young says she accepts his decision, but her offer still stands. And he can change his mind at any time. He's glad to hear that. But for now, he doesn't need to be patronized. The dangers that may arise don't seem serious to him. He's accustomed to a life of routine. No one threatens him now, but if danger does come his way, these bells will warn him. Ever since the first dungeon monster invasion, Yu Ji Ho has not visited the beaches. All of them are inhabited by monsters that have yet to be chased away. But he loves nature and the sea so much. After a long time of not having them in his life, he was able to find them in his dungeon. It's a real treat for him. This sea is incredibly beautiful. It is more beautiful than any other sea that Yu Ji Ho has ever seen. After discovering this beautiful place to rest, he began to visit it more and more often. Now no one could stop him from doing so. He walked along the beach, breathing the crystal clear air and enjoying the sound of the surf. And today, he had come here. Today's conversation was a test for him and he needed to regain his strength. No, there's no way he would trade all of this for being a member of the Fire Guild. Yuji is trying to gather his thoughts. He observes this beautiful scenery and comes to his senses. He plans to read his favorite books. Recently, he had to face a lot of unforeseen problems. This purest seawater helps him forget everything. He wants to be alone for a while. Alone with his books is so pleasant for him. But he's completely forgotten about the possible dangers of the forest. This makes him tense. It's not always possible to achieve solitude just by getting to this place. Sometimes it's not enough. Yuji Ho was able to relax, cozy by the fire, reading ancient books. In the silence of this beach, he was able to fully immerse himself in this beautiful world of books. The bonfire looks beautiful in the evening. It is so cozy here. He listened to the sound of the sea, which is not yet overrun by monsters. The waves were hitting the rocks in a measured way. He thinks it would be nice to bring his friends here and have fun. They hadn't seen the sea for such a long time either. Suddenly a strange sound reached him. Yuji became wary. Who could it be? He took a torch and headed towards the cave where the sound was coming from. It sounded like a meow, but it was hard to call that voice a cat voice. Oh entered the cave. The sound sounds like a cry for help, but he can't find who is making it. The ringing bells are silent, so there's no threat. They would have warned him of danger. It means only one thing. Someone needs help. A pterodrone captain has flown in. He confirms his hunch. He sees a helpless creature that needs help. He shows Jiho the way to him and he runs without stopping. We need to get there as soon as possible. Finally, they reach the injured person. It's an animal lying on the ground and letting out pitiful moans. It's an Arctis. It looks something like a cat, but it also has similarities to a snow leopard. He looks gravely ill. Who has hurt him? The kind-hearted Yuji Ho gets tears in his eyes at the sight of this poor animal. He can't bear to see him suffer. He takes him in his arms. It's very weak. This animal has clearly been hurt by some monster. He is in need of care. Theradron sits down on his shoulder. He wants to draw his attention to the other Teradrons who are also involved in saving this cute kitty. He turned around and saw four Teradrons already rushing towards him with the fish. He is so kind and generous. They drag two huge fish on their backs, even though it's very hard for them. They want the Arctis to eat them. They started helping him a long time ago, but for now, that's all they could do for him. Yu Jiha will be able to take better care of him. He thanks the captain for all they have done for him and praises him. He pats him on the head. That's how the Teradrons like it. Arctis takes a refresher on the fish. It did him good. 
After the recovery potion, he finally came to his senses. Yuji put it in his lap and sat next to the fire. He had warmed himself up. He felt much better now. This was the first time he had found a beast in this forest. So it wasn't as desolate as he had previously thought. He stroked its head and wondered if it had always been here, or had it come from another dungeon, and what had happened to him here. The kitten seemed to be awake. The care and affection had done their job. He opened his eyes and started his cat song. Yuji Ho is sorry he woke him up, and he looks at his savior with such grateful eyes. He understands everything. He's so sweet. It's hard to resist his cuteness. He makes funny cat noises. He's insanely pleased when Yuji strokes his head. He enjoys it and purrs appreciatively. It's just impossible to resist him. He picks him up and starts squeezing him. He can't stop squeezing him, even though he doesn't really like it. He lets himself be examined. After all, this man saved him. Yuji thinks about what to name him. He decides that the name Bomb would be perfect for such a cute creature, and he happily pronounces his new name. He thinks it would be a good idea to take him in for a while. He needs to get stronger. The woods aren't the safest place. The buyer was overjoyed when she saw this adorable creature. Yuji Ho hired Bomb, and he's become very popular with the store's guests. He is excited to introduce his new friend to the public. Bomb is sweetly stretching after a good night's sleep. The lady wants to pet him. Yuji lets her do it, but Bomb doesn't want to be touched by strangers. He lets her know it when she puts her hand on him. He hurt her. He broke her heart. The scratch will heal, but not the broken heart. The owner of the beast tries to apologize for it. But this bitter experience is also an experience. He needs to be careful. It's a wild beast after all. Yuji knows that this cute little guy can get away with anything, but he doesn't always get away with it. Seo Jin the witch came to the store. She hasn't stopped by in a while. Yuji is happy to see her. She brought Yuji coffee. That's so nice of her. She wants to apologize for everything. But suddenly she hears someone's meow. It startled her. She got scared and covered herself with the first thing she could find, which was a coat rack. Amazing, such a brave woman afraid of adorable kittens. Strange. He tried to reassure her. He said the animal was safe. She was able to get closer and her impression was corrected. He told her the story of this tiger cub. He tried to convince her as gently as possible that she had nothing to fear. Yuji noticed that Sojin cared about his furry friend. He's already started his song. He's ready to accept her affection. She overcomes her fear and brings her hand up to Bomb. She has to be brave. As soon as she touches his fur, her doubts are instantly dispelled. This fur can't carry any evil in it. It's so soft and fluffy. Seo Jin wants to know about that free scroll he gave to Hua Young. To her, such generosity seems reckless and even stupid. She doesn't know how to tell him about it. But she realizes that he's just the way he is. People like that are very rare. Bomb bites Yuji's white shirt. Does he want a snack? The bell rings. Does that mean Bomb wants to bite him or... He's in more serious danger. He didn't realize what was happening yet. After a moment, it became clear. A level four alert is coming over the loudspeaker. Civilians should proceed to the shelter immediately. And he was no exception. Yuji Ho is uneasy. This alert doesn't bode well. The military is already rushing to the scene. They're asking the civilians to evacuate. They need to hurry. Yuji is heading to the shelter with everyone else. He would like to be involved too. He should leave it to the more experienced hunters for now. His pet is scared too. Taking care of him helps him deal with his fear. Yuji felt a blow of incredible strength. They are already here. There is panic in the bunker. Everyone except Yuji is screaming in terror. He's the only one who keeps his composure even though he's a little scared. Who are those monsters? Caring helps him forget about himself. He must remember those he has tamed. He caresses and soothes his pet and begins to believe his own words. Such a huge hole in space has not occurred in a long time. Even the military is frightened. They have brought in a large number of combat vehicles to fight the monsters. This event could be a disaster. Therefore, it is necessary to act coherently. Hundreds of soldiers lined up in front of the bunker to protect the civilians. The best hunters have arrived on an emergency call. They're ready to do their job. Seo Jin Hyun is also here. That girl who was scared of the cat, the matter cracked and a dark liquid came out. They are already here. Those monsters have such a horrible appearance. They are simply disgusting. The military opened fire on them first. The hunters need to conserve their strength. They destroyed them. The first salvo is successful, but what happens next? These skeletons aren't the only intruders who came here. The chief of ordnance himself was horrified when he saw this ghastly visitor. He ordered a targeted attack on it. This bastard is dangerous. The battalion commander gave the order. The squad discovered a new target. The targeted missile hit right on its mouth. That should do it. There was a terrible explosion. It must have been destroyed for sure. The command unit is hoping so. Everyone's waiting for the smoke to clear. He's safe and sound after he swallowed the missile. Not good news for them. He's gotten even more violent. 
He's talking about some kind of enemy. He's beating his chest and saying he sees a dangerous enemy. His target is a sanctuary. The military has to retreat on orders from their superior. But he just walked past a group of military men. What does that mean? Where is he going? The worst part is that he's going to a shelter with civilians. Why does he see them as the enemy? Seo Jin is going into battle. She has a duty to protect the civilians. She uses her signature weapon, a riotous dance of endless swords. It looks incredibly frightening. Cho Hua Young is not idle either. She's ready to use the advanced firepower that Yu Ji Ho gave her. She delivers blow after blow. This fight is crucial for everyone. The fate of thousands of people is in her hands. There's not a moment to hesitate. They strike again and again, but the monster takes no noticeable damage. It continues on its way towards the enemy. They must unite all their efforts. There is no way back. He raises his fist right above the bunker. They were unable to stop him. He strikes the civilians. This is the worst thing that could happen. The hunters are failing. The situation is critical. So Jin rushes to the bunker to create a distraction. He's already infiltrated the shelter. It wasn't hard for him to break the wall. His fist didn't even hurt. He broke it right where Yu Ji Ho and his furry friend are. People run away in terror. Yu Ji Ho stands there like a stumbling block and can't move. His legs are out of control from the horror. The monster says he's the dangerous enemy. He pulls his huge hand towards him. Oh, just falls to the floor. It's hard to describe in words the terror he feels. But his little friend is not afraid of him. He hisses like he's got another customer in front of him. Soon his hissing turns into a loud, almost ultrasonic howl. It's ultrasonic kill mode. Unbelievable, this little guy is so loud. His master is sitting on the ground. He's shocked. He still can't move. His tiger cub has turned out to be a real fighting giant. The monster is uncomfortable. He makes a disgruntled face. For him, this encounter could have a disastrous outcome. He's even sad. He's getting weaker. But his enemy, the tiger cub bomb, has turned into a ferocious beast, and he has no intention of pitying anyone. Seo Jin couldn't help but notice the huge surge of ether. Didn't she realize what had happened yet? She rushes over to help. Hua Young also attacks the weakened monster. The best moment to attack had come. She directed the fire beams from the staff in hopes of finally destroying it. The weakened monster won't be able to resist it. It's getting heavier and heavier. Seo Jin joins the fight. She delivers the decisive blow. It's just in time. A terrifying scream comes out of its ugly mouth. That's the last sound he made. Which? So Jin can finally exhale. This confrontation would be one she would remember for a long time. It's done. Such feats they haven't accomplished yet. They go to the bunker. Seo Jin sees Yu Ji Ho inside. He's still hugging his ward. This challenging beast saved them all and is purring like nothing happened. This is the best gift the forest has given him. A true friend.